Good morning and welcome to this week's Sunday service when we begin our Advent journey and we have the opportunity to sing all those beautiful Advent hymns. Let us open our time together in prayer. God of mystery, we have stepped into Advent and await your revelations. We have stepped into Advent hoping that we and others will see and feel and know your message. You are a patient, persevering God who offers your all for us. You offer to us the depth of your being, the essence of life, the gift of love beyond compare. And we wait to celebrate again the gift of Jesus born for us, given for us. We look to you, for you will show us true life bursting forth. Amen. We sing our opening hymn, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. We'll now have our Bible reading followed by the talk. The reading is from Luke chapter 21 verses 25 to 36. There will be signs in the sun, moon and stars. On the earth nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. Men will faint from terror, apprehensive of what is coming on in the world. For the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When these things begin to take place, stand up and lift your heads because your redemption is drawing near. He told them this parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. When they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that the kingdom of God is near. I tell you the truth, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Be careful or your hearts will be weighed down with dissipation, drunkenness and anxieties of life. And that day will close on you unexpectedly like a trap, for it will come upon all those who live on the face of the whole earth. Be always on the watch and pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen 
and that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. This is the word of the Lord. Welcome to Advent, the season of preparation. Since the 11th century, it has been the four Sundays leading up to Christmas, and the preparation has all been about the time when we will meet Christ again when he returns in what is known as the parousia. So it's look busy, get involved in mission, think of your own relationship with him because he's going to come soon. And judging by our reading today, which isn't a particularly pleasant reading, we see that the early church would have keenly awaited his arrival so their preparation would have been in earnest because everything was falling apart. It is believed that in our reading, Jesus was looking towards the time when the temple would be destroyed, when Jerusalem would be destroyed by the Romans and all people within that area, whether they were Jew or Gentile, whether they were Christians, they would be sent into exile. And although it also heralded the time of the church's persecution, it also heralded the time of the church growing in mission like never before. Through their journey into different lands, meeting people of different languages, they would take this Christian message with them and the church would expand and extend in people's lives. So, looking back at history, it certainly wasn't a comfortable time, but it was a time of great growth when the church expanded. When we think about the changes in society and in the world we've experienced, we know that the things that we've mourned, things we've been sad to say goodbye to, things that were very much familiar to us, and the concern that things are not going to return to the way they were before. And that is probably true. But where should we stand as Christians and as a church within this changing world? I'm reminded of the story of two twins who on Christmas morning were given very different presents. The first twin was very pessimistic. They always felt sad and they always looked at the negatives in life. Well, as they were presented with their gift on Christmas morning, they opened it. It was the train set they had been asking for. But as they set it up, they thought, it's not quite like the one I saw on the television. It's not as big. It doesn't have as many stations to play with. It's really not what I wanted. It's a train set, but it's not the one I wanted. And then the other twin was led outside by the parents and presented a big pile of manure. Now, this twin was always very optimistic, always very happy, always keen for a new adventure. And as they looked at this pile of manure, they thought, how exciting. For there to be so much manure, there must be a pony somewhere. Let's go and find the pony. Well, we're all very different, aren't we, in the way we deal with challenges and change in our lives. And sometimes we can't help being who we are. But in Advent, we are called to enter into a time of preparation where we almost challenge who we are, where we try to recondition and rethink how we are as Christians. And so we need to try to, instead of mourning what we don't have in our lives, looking with hope to the future for what we could have in this changing world. As the church changes in line with society, we look for a time when we can grow and extend into people's lives. But that can only happen when we look to see the saplings growing through the concrete of society. And so, the season of Advent 
a season of hope, looking towards Christ's return and being the people of hope, heralding in his peace, his justice and his love for all people and thinking, as a member of Christ Church, what can I contribute towards this mission we've been called to in this new changing world? Amen. We sing our next hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. And now, let us, in the power of the Holy Spirit, turn to the Father in prayer. O God, you are the beginning and end of all things. We pray to you for those who nurture new life, both physical and spiritual, for teachers and leaders, and those who have inspired our faith, for midwives and prophets, for the people who call us to start again, for all who are at the beginning of a new adventure of faith, and for all who feel that it is time to lay down some responsibilities, for children growing up in challenging times, 
for those we know who are approaching the end of their life, and for all who watch at the bedside of the sick. Give us expectant hearts as we listen for your voice. Wait for the Lord, his day is near. Wait for the Lord, be strong, take heart. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your voice sings through scripture and through the words of the prophets, calling us back to your heart of love and filling us with hope in your vision of a better world where justice and gentleness shape our lives. God, our protector and provider, we pray to you for trust in you when our world seems so troubled, for faithfulness to your work of life in your church, for a narrative of hope in society and in our leadership, for the courage to challenge the lies of exclusion and inequality, and for a new beginning. Give us expectant hearts when we listen for your voice. Wait for the Lord. His day is near. Wait for the Lord. Be strong. Take heart. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your voice sings in the darkness, where people are lost and alone, distant from home, sick or afraid. O oh God, you mend what is broken. We pray to you for all refugees and asylum seekers, for a de decent, humane and workable immigration system, for the collective will to face our responsibility for the conflict-torn areas of the world, for Ethiopia as the Prime Minister escalates war against the rebels, for Afghanistan as winter begins to bite and the food is in desperately short supply for support workers and volunteers working in rescue, and for all who are in danger today. Give us expectant hearts as we listen for your voice. Wait for the Lord. His day is near. Wait for the Lord. Be strong. Take heart. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your voice sings in the desert in the land which is dry and parched, in the hidden places where you are at work, and in the quiet places that are full of unseen acts of kindness. God of peace and wholeness, we pray to you for the chance encounters of the week ahead, for friends and family, and the blessing they add to our lives. For everyone that has helped us through the past year, for people we usually overlook, for the bereft and bereaved, and for those who watch over them. Give us expectant hearts as we listen for your voice. Wait for the Lord. His day is near. Wait for the Lord. Be strong. Take heart. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. In a moment we will have this week's gallery, but before then I'd like to remind you all that next Sunday we have our Advent carol service at Holy Trinity Bickerstaff at 11 o'clock. We've been meeting in uh, the churches of the Benefice at alternate months to come together as an opportunity to celebrate and have fellowship. And so I hope to see many of you there and I know there's going to be some refreshments following the service. So now we're going to sit back and enjoy this week's gallery.
Some of you will remember that the 30th of November is St Andrew's Day, when we remember the life of St Andrew and also pray for Scotland. So let us come together now and pray the collect for St Andrew's Day. Almighty God, who did give us such grace unto the Holy Apostle St Andrew, that he readily obeyed the calling of thy Son Jesus Christ, and followed him without delay. Grant unto us all that we, being called by thy holy word, may forthwith give up ourselves obediently to fulfil the holy commandments, through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We sing our final hymn, Hills of the North Rejoice. Let us bring our time together this morning to an end in prayer. Loving God, as we end our time together and leave this place, let us go in hope, live by hope, and be sad of hope for all to see. In Jesus' name. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>